Welcome to Free the Mind, Free the People, a podcast where we come together to empower each other through knowledge and discuss the issues that shape our everyday lives. All views and information shared in this podcast are held by the host alone and do not represent the stances of the University of Central Florida as an institution. Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to the first episode of Free the Mind, Free the People podcast. Today, we just want to introduce ourselves and just give more information as to who we are, our interests, and our goals for this podcast. We'll also give you an overview of the topics you can expect to learn about throughout the podcast as you listen. My name is Marina Rivera, and I'm a first year sociology master's student at the University of Central Florida. My name is Hallie Spencer, and I am also a first year applied sociology master's student at the University of Central Florida. All right, so we're going to be first uh, defining sociology and what sociolo- being a sociologist means to us. So um, first, Uh, If I were to define what sociology is, I'd say it's the study of society and everything that makes up society from individuals to institutions. But when it comes to being a sociologist, to me, it's more than just studying society and understanding how it works, but it's actually giving back to that society that you're studying and making sure that you're sharing your knowledge and things that you've learned um, to hopefully create some change. How yeah, I agree with that. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, like to go on top of that, I think the study of sociology goes beyond just like looking at these fragmented societal institutions and interactions. We also need to look at how these different societal aspects intertwine with each other below the surface in ways that are not immediately obvious to us. So sociology can ask why and how, but most importantly, I think it should ask what does this mean moving forward? And the sociology I care about personally needs to have a foundation of social betterment because I don't, what's the point if not? Like, I really don't know what the point would be because there are a lot of sociologists who believe that we as sociologists shouldn't actually affect society. And I just don't get that. <laughs> yeah. And I, I wanted to add um, really in, so, in the social sciences, there is this always this battle between objectivity, being neutral, not influencing your findings. Um, but there's also a history of sociology being um, filled with people that want to learn about society because they see the problems in it and they Mm -hmm. see it as a responsibility to share that knowledge and to actually have an impact because like you said there's really no point if all Mm -hmm. we're doing is learning and not really making trying to see society progress. Right. And that's why public sociology is so important to both Marina and I. And that's why we're here, basically. Mm -hmm. And so now that you mentioned um, that we are here for public sociology, we should discuss how we got into sociology and why did we always know that we wanted to do sociology? Let me know. (laughs) Go first. (laughs) Yeah. So my journey to sociology was not a simple one. I started as a chem- chemistry slash biology student on the pre-med track. And I thought right now I'd be like making bank as a doctor. So obviously I'm not here for the money. <laughs> um, <laughs> when I transferred schools, I thought I would be on the poli sci track, but I found that there were a lot of frustrating things with that major that made me switch. And after I took the sociology elective, I realized that sociology had their variety of lenses that I wanted to study my interests through. So. I would say similarly, I was also originally um, a political science major, and um, I also felt that it was a bit restrictive. Um, And just to go back a little bit, um, my my interest in sociology and poli-sci was because I've always been interested in uh, just society, different ideas, theories. Um, That's always what I've been passionate about. Um, And Sociology was really the one, also an elective that I took because there was nothing else. But then I ended up realizing that it actually fit better than political science to my interest because um, it actually allowed me to focus on the so, on the social issues that mm-hmm. that I've noticed throughout my life. And I was never into political campaigns, politicians, all of that. That never appealed to me, and I always felt kind of out I felt like I didn't belong really uh, mm-hmm. with the other poli-sci students um, and 
I was actually told by a sociology professor that if I wanted to help people, poli sci wasn't it, <laughs> which it's not a broad generalization. Um, we're not claiming that, but I do Peace agree that. to poli sci <laughs> students. <laughs> yes, but I do agree that for me at least, um, it was too restrictive, too focused on the campaigning and the current political structure. Mm -hmm. Whereas I really just wanted to get deep into why are these pro social problems, why do they exist, and how do we fix them? Yeah. The too long didn't read version of what we just said is take a sociology elective because you might realize that's actually where you ought to be. <laughs> and yes. you might be here where we are now. <laughs> yeah. So, um, and now moving more towards our personal lives, um, we're going to talk about so our personal lives and what throughout our lives has influenced our decision to study sociology. So um, for me, my background as a Puerto Rican woman who migrated to Florida at 12 years old, I migrated into a mostly white community. And that made me aware of the inequalities and the disadvantages that I was facing and others like me were facing. Um, but even before that, as a child, I was always really curious about how the world worked. And I was always really passionate about speaking up for the people that can't speak for themselves and all of that social justice warrior type of thing. <laughs> um, and so my, those questions and that passion led me to religion um, because I wanted answers to those big questions about life. But that actually ended up just making me even more aware of the injustice and discrimination that exists in the world in the church and but also in society as a whole so um i'd say that my experiences as feeling like an outcast from school to church um are part of what led me to sociology yeah thinking about both of our stories it's interesting how religion has both kind of played a hand in how we ended up into sociology because for me um as a jewish woman my grandpa and his family were Jewish Holocaust survivors from Germany. And I learned about a genocide at an age which no one should know what genocide is. It felt like I was learning how to crawl and learning what the Crystal Nacht was at the same time. And that was um, something that like kind of lit a spark in me that I didn't realize for a long time was there. Because uh, growing up, I heard all the stories about um, my grandpa and his twin brother being hidden by a Catholic priest that was part of the resistance. Um, shout out to Father Tuberculi, that was his name. <laughs> um, also the story of my their mom who survived as a prisoner of Auschwitz for two years and their 15 year old sister who was unfortunately not as lucky at surviving at Auschwitz. And I realized my family line was filled with people who faced injustice and faced hate and we would not have survived and I would not be here today if it wasn't for their strength, but also from the aid of people who were more privileged than them, people who could have like faced horrible like imprisonment, like they could have been killed for helping those people that society kind of believed did not really deserve to live anymore. And so I want to make sure as someone who is privileged as a white woman that I realize that I can aid people that also society has just kept on pushing down. And that's why I am where I am today. Yeah, thank you for sharing <laughs> that. Yeah. <laughs> And I know, um, I just wanted to add that I think a lot of people in sociology um, that are of marginalized identities mm -hmm. find some sort of comfort in sociology because mm -hmm. it allows us to understand our position in society and how we got to where we are. Mm -hmm. And I think it's also, I think we are necessary in sociology because we are able to bring that that other perspective mm -hmm. that's not been necessarily always the dominant perspective right. um, and just shed light on those issues and allows us to be more critical about our society right so, exactly beyond that so we know why we're here we know why we want to be sociologists but why do we want to start a podcast and that's the next real question we want to answer you guys and what do we have to offer um, by basically starting this podcast um, so I know that there are a lot of podcasts out there. We know that there are a lot of podcasts out there. We get it. 
Um, however, as Gen Z-ish college students of sociology, I believe that we have something of value to add. And one of our goals is to basically discuss current events through a sociological lens. And that basically is how sociologists see the world. Um, I think this is something that is greatly lacking during online news and everyday discussions. And I truly believe that this, will, this lens will show that we agree on things more than we think we do. Um, I think there's kind of this like stereotype that Gen Z people towards the liberal end of the political spectrum that are interested in politics are kind of like crazy and too much not grounded, like the whole like crazy blue haired liberal agenda, social justice warrior people. Um, but I think that you'll find that that's not really what it's actually like when we'll discuss these topics. Um, I think as we discuss these topics, things we don't usually see eye to eye on or things that usually don't make sense, the logic will be drawn out and it will start to make sense where we're coming from. And we hope through the sociological lens, these divides that have formed over time between like party and demographic lines will start to fade. And we'll all realize that we're more similar than we really think we are. Yeah, um, and I, I share that same, um, that same vision for this mm -hmm. um, podcast. I, more specifically, um, I think that, well, again, going back to knowledge, power. <laughs> I think that especially in today's world where so much information is just so we are given too much information <laughs> from different perspectives and we don't know what exactly is truth. Um, and so I think that it's important for us, uh, and I mean specifically graduate students who have access to certain information that isn't available to the general public, I think it's our responsibility to to share that and that's part of my goal with this podcast is to use it to share that information and share that knowledge with people to help empower them and help them empower their communities as well um and also i also want a public speaking career in the future so this is sort of a this is preparation for that arena because it's a completely different arena than academia so yeah i hope this will be a good experience for us both mm -hmm. yeah so we kind of discussed our experience within other disciplines so what do you think what do we think makes sociology stand out from other disciplines what makes sociology stand out to me from other disciplines is mainly that it's it's broad and in, in what it covers and what it analyzes and the information that you can get. Um, I think that it really, because again, I define it as the study of society and everything that makes up society from individuals to large institutions. I think that it gives us much more context to what is going on behind even day-to-day -day interactions, but also our workplace, healthcare, politics, government, mm -hmm. families, all of that. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that it really does give a better context, um, greater context as to why the world works the way it does and how it works. And also uh, because it is a social science, critical thinking and research skills are both skills that are emphasized in sociology and i really like that because i feel like i didn't really get as much of that in other courses that i've taken yeah. i think that sociology at least right now it's trying to be more and in the past it's been critical it's been self-critical so mm -hmm. it tries to really question things and question how we know things and mm -hmm. why certain ideas are more popular than others and more accepted than others and those things critical thinking and research skills especially in the, in the world that we live in right now are things that we really need um to really be able to discern and to to as individuals when we look at the world and we receive information we should be able to be critical about it and really um just Think about the information that we are accepting as true. Mm -hmm. 
I loved that you were you used the word context. Like nothing that happens around us exists in a vacuum and understanding that context is so extremely important. And that's also why I think sociology is important because I think other disciplines have too narrow of a scope. And we kind of touched on our experience in political science, but to me, I switched from political science to sociology because of this problem. Like in class, one day we would talk about solving crime, and then a week later we would talk about our education system, and a week later we'd talk about poverty as if they aren't like painfully interconnected. And I get it'd be easier to solve these problems if they weren't connected, but realistically, trying to do it without realizing that they matter to each other, I think will be extremely fruitless and I think that's kind of why where we are where we are today with a lot of our social issues um, because you can't fix or talk about one institution in society without realizing they all affect each other and it can't be this or that solutions and sociology forces you to see that like bigger picture and once you widen that scope I think that people who generally are ideologically kind of different We'll start to see the same patterns and it was frustrating because like of course we can't agree with each other like of course i get it we're both looking at things through the lens that's like the size of a straw and you can barely see anything out of your own let alone what i'm seeing out of my perspective and so if we had telescopes figuratively not literally like telescopes but if we had a larger view it would make this a lot easier and solutions would be um i think we'd be able to talk about solutions in a much better way and I think that's what the lenses of sociology do for us. Yeah, I I would say in in political science, I mean, I didn't take I only took a few courses in political science, so I won't I won't don't take my word for it. <laughs> but in the few <laughs> the few courses I took in political science, I I found the same the same challenge for me. And I think that at times like the whole understanding of the political system through the parties and those strict ideologies can definitely i don't think that political science allows for more much critique mm -hmm. when it comes to the actual structure of those parties and the structure of of government and all of that it's kind of right. like here here's a system it is what it is let's work with it yeah it limits I, us a lot yeah, I never felt comfortable with that. I mm -hmm. wanted to critique the system. <laughs> and I <laughs> I wanted I didn't want to accept that it worked because it worked, that that's how right. it was. So sociology, in my view, gives you the tools to be able to question those things. And to, like you said, I think when we get rid of those binaries, and all those like, um, just black and white thinking, mm -hmm. we can actually find a lot of overlap that with people um, that we may think we would disagree with on everything. So I think mm -hmm. that when we peel all that off, <laughs> we take all that away, um, it, sociology can, can allow us to just be able to, to have those conversations and to right. um, look at different perspectives. And also, I will say, sociology um like we were talking or we were discussing we don't want to paint a picture of polit political science um as a negative discipline because we mm -hmm. we use political science sociology needs political science economics mm -hmm. and psychology and all of those disciplines we should be interdisciplinary mm -hmm. um but i think that it's also important to acknowledge at least for us in sociology we have always felt that sociology is kind of seen as not really a science not really as valuable or as concrete as something like political science um and so we just want to establish that there is a lot of value in sociology and um we are constantly feeling that we need to justify our discipline mm -hmm. before the world before <laughs> the scientists and the experts but we are experts too <laughs> we do yeah. science too mm -hmm. um and i think that we have a lot to offer if if people were open to looking at things beyond that binary mm -hmm. black and white thinking um yeah sociologists yeah. every day are trying to just explain what sociology even is and i promise yes. it's something important like i hope through this podcast you'll learn 
that sociology fills gaps that are extremely necessary and that you will see the value in what sociology can do and add to other disciplines and what might be lacking. So I promise there's a reason for all this. We're not just some random major. <laughs> a lot of people are like, oh, you're in sociology. Can you please like give me some therapy sessions? Because they think it's like psychology. <laughs> they, they don't know what it is. Yeah. <laughs> and so like, I promise this major means something. <laughs> yes. It's much more than just psychology for people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> or like for groups of people, that's what they say. Right, yeah. <laughs> All right, so um, so now going into more of our goals and interests in our career as sociologists, um, we want to discuss that. So, would you like to? Yeah. Turn it off. off? <laughs> yeah. So, my main interests are in race, class, and gender, and especially within social media versus traditional media. Um, I have a love hate relationship with the media. And um, it really shapes so much of what we believe. And I want to discover how that happens, why it happens, who's controlling it, and how to change it for the better. Um, you should tune in to our manufacturing consent episode for more on that, if that sounds interesting yes. to you. Um, but for my undergrad, I did research on um, if people who use social media um, versus watching the news had different opinions on police reform. and um, it was extremely interesting and insightful for me to do, and I hope to maybe continue that in my thesis. Um, but I hope that I can also become a sociology professor and more of a public speaker role within the discipline, because I want people to have the opportunity to love sociology as much as I do and to find their meaning in sociology. Yeah, and I share some of those interests as well, and some of those goals, too. <laughs> um, mainly. In my career as a sociologist, um, my interests are race, gender, religion, and most recently Christian nationalism. And um, these are th this is what I'm doing research on. And just for a brief, brief explanation mm -hmm. of Christian nationalism, basically Christian nationalism is an idea, an ideology that is not exclusive to Christians. It's broadly accepted in America, but um, it really just means believing that America is a Christian nation and that it should uphold Christian ideals. Christian nationalism, um, I became interested in Christian nationalism after the January 6th insurrection. Um, and there were images of people with uh, Christian flags and American flags and Trump flags and et cetera, all the things and these symbols uh, were really interesting to me because I didn't expect to see that. And so in my research, I'm really interested in beyond Christian nationalism. Um, I'm interested in Christian communities as a whole. Again, I have experience uh, within the church, predominantly the conservative white church. Um, and so I am really interested in learning how these communities uh, are influenced by society and how they influence society as well. Um, and also in terms of my career, I, I wanted to research obviously, um, but I also, I would like to teach uh, part-time and, but mainly I'm really interested in a public speaking role as well as Hallie. Um, and I, I'm just really interested in speaking up um sharing the things that i learn and um just sharing sharing the knowledge that we that i um gain as a sociologist and hope i hope that 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 i can use that expertise to help solve these social inequalities and just be a, bring a new perspective to these social issues like christian nationalism Mm -hmm. So yes, that's my main goal as a sociologist. Awesome. Yeah. Um, and so we know the goals for ourselves, but what are the goals for this podcast? Okay, so um, for this podcast itself, um, I guess I touched on this before, but <laughs> to reiterate, we really see this as a tool. It's a tool to share knowledge, to give people access to sociology and the things that we've learned in sociology, again, 
as graduate students, we've learned about public sociology, public scholarship, however you would like to call it. But really what it means is to share our knowledge with the public and look for ways to create social change using that knowledge to not be selfish with our knowledge. <laughs> it's to, going back to my first answer, it's what we view as the responsibility of a sociologist. Mm -hmm. um, so that's my goal for the podcast itself. Yeah, I agree. Um, I also hope to share the importance and value of sociological knowledge. And like you said, use that to empower other people to do the same for themselves. We want to kind of take like the elitism out of the knowledge that we are sharing. This is not knowledge that just master students should know. You shouldn't like just because we are in the program doesn't mean that this knowledge doesn't deserve to be had by everyone. And we're hoping to also give a different or I hope to also give a different perspective and to reframe discussions around our most talked about current events and social issues going on. All right, so um, just one thing, one last thing to add to that um, question, answer. I just wanted to um, also establish that, yes, we want to share knowledge, but we also hope to gain knowledge, not only for from community members and people that we bring here to talk about these topics with us, um, but we also hope to learn from the community that we create here. Um, and the people that are participating and just watching us and listening to us through this whole process. Um, we really hope to not only be, we're not some, you know, like wise, we're the, the all and all be all. <laughs> um, we wanna learn from you all too. So mm -hmm. yeah. um, that is a part of the process of public sociology as well. Mm -hmm. Part of something we discuss in our next episode would be the fact that knowledge is not just what's in like the walls of libraries and in these crazy institutions. Knowledge can come from everyday experiences. And that's something that sociology really values is people live people's lived experience because people sitting in like their thrones in the castle don't know what's going on outside and they shouldn't be the ones making decisions about the people outside if they don't know what's actually happening and they're not living it there. So we know that our knowledge is limited in that there is knowledge beyond the walls of institutions. Mm -hmm. So I completely agree with that. That's very important. Okay, so um, now let's talk about some of the topics that we'll be discussing um, for this podcast. <clears throat> so do you want to start it? <laughs> Oh yeah, so um, some topics that we will discuss include the meaning of love within activism, um, the media and the power elite, which are two of my favorite topics to talk about, um, and a few more if you wanna talk about those. Yes, so then uh, we have intellectual activism, sociological imagination and sociological theories. And our next episode is actually gonna be on intellectual activism. Just to define a few of these concepts, uh, intellectual activism refers to the idea of people that are in academia can use their knowledge to speak to those in power and speak out on about social inequality. Um, so there's two components of it. There's speaking truth to power, so the powerful, and then speaking truth to people which is actually what we're trying to do, what we talked a bit about a few minutes ago, um, sharing knowledge with people in our community. And that is what we hope to do through this podcast. So that's intellectual activism. And then the sociological imagination is more of the, the principle or the idea in sociology that we can, we can understand our personal problems and the circumstances that we live in by and apply that understanding to the broader society so it is using that perspective to see how our personal circumstances and society as a whole are connected and lastly sociological theories that's pretty self-explanatory <laughs> just <laughs> theories that we come up with in sociology 
<laughs> yeah, and you'll see through the episodes how each of these more like sociological heavy ideas match with current events and things that are being discussed in the wider, wider society in general. So these will all start connecting and making sense as you as you continue to listen. But lastly, our podcast is called Free the Mind for the People, and we kind of want to discuss what that means and why we created that name. And Marina, do you want to talk about what this podcast will do and what it could possibly do for people? Yeah, so mainly, well, personally, I hope that this podcast creates an interest in people to learn more about society um, and apply what they learn to their to what we are experiencing right now in the world. There's a lot going on, we all know this. Um, but yeah, we we really um, free the mind, free the people. What it means is just, again, we think that we can liberate and empower people with knowledge. And so really, we just wanna empower people, empower them to empower their peers and their communities. Um, and yes, yeah, so to use that knowledge to really understand that the world that they live in and how to respond to mm -hmm. that world and, and the problems in that world. Right. Yeah. Free the mind, free the people. Like the name emphasizes that this is a collective effort and that it's kind of a chain reaction. And also that knowledge is power. And that's why they gatekeep it so much. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. The knowledge that Marina and I have, like we said earlier, can only go so far. So having a community that is based in like knowledge dissemination and also supporting each other in our goals, we believe, or I believe is ultimately what can create the change that we hope to see and um, fixing and solving those social issues that we all come to find are really painfully hurting our lives. <laughs> and we wanna see that finally come to an end. And I believe that this is a route for doing that. That is all we have for this episode but uh we do want to introduce our first episode which i kind of alluded to uh, a few minutes ago <laughs> but um yes we want to introduce our second episode um and i will let holly do that thank you guys so much for tuning in i hope we are starting to build those super healthy parasocial relationships and that um We'll tune in for our next episode, which is about intellectual activism and speaking truth to power versus speaking truth to people and how we can use that ability to make the most social changes possible. Um, so please join us for the next one. Bye. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Bye again.